All right, welcome back. Uh, we're in this example, uh, Hermite example one from one of day eight, uh, sections three, four, and three, five, sorry, three, three, and three, four, uh, the Hermite polynomials and cubic spline. Uh, we're looking at solving uh, this particular uh, interpolation problem. We want to use the Hermite polynomials given the set of data here. We're given uh, the k values of zero, one, and two. Uh, we're given the x nodes, um, xk of zero, one, and three. Sorry, one and two as 1.3, 1.6, and 1.9. Uh, we're given the functional values at each of these nodes and the values of the derivatives at each of these nodes. Okay, so we're going to compute the Hermite polynomial two different ways. Uh, and so we're going to jump into that next. Uh, we have, so we're just rewriting the data here uh, on paper. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, apply the Hermite uh, theorem that we we just dis discussed earlier in the notes here. Uh, and compute the Hermite polynomial that way, and then uh, we'll tackle a second method. Uh, and one that I, I think for uh, for small examples, at least, it seems to make more sense to me, or at least um, feels more of a natural approach. So uh, let's first compute uh, the Lagrange uh, polynomials for this data set. Okay, so um, the L to zero of x is going to give us uh, x minus x1 times x minus x0, sorry, x2. Um, looking, I was looking at the, the two zero here. So, uh, so this is x minus x1, x minus x2 over uh, x0 minus x1, x0 minus x1. Next two, hey, okay. subscripts, watch out for them. Okay, uh, and so if we plug in this, uh, these values into um, like GeoGebra or uh, Maxima uh, or any computer algebra system that you like, or just do it by hand, whichever you choose, you'll end up getting uh, 50 over 9x squared minus 175 over 9x plus uh, 152 over 9. Okay. All right, so there's the first one. Uh, we've got a couple more to go. Um, I guess while we're here, let's uh, go ahead and compute uh, L2, zero prime of X. Uh, since we, it's an easy thing to check out. So taking the derivative here, you're gonna get 100 uh, over nine X, just bringing down the power of two. And then uh, here we're gonna get one minus 175 over nine. Okay, all right, um, let's look at uh, so there's one set. Um, I, I find it's helpful to group uh, the derivatives and the uh, the polynomials, uh, the Lagrange polynomials together, uh, and then plugging them into uh, the resulting uh, Hermite polynomial. Uh, it seems to make, for me, a little bit more sense. Okay, so L21 of X here is going to give us uh, X minus X naught x minus x2 over x1 minus x naught and then x1 minus x2. Okay, looks like my pen is dying here. Let me uh, see if switching it out will work. Though I hate to switch colors uh, when it doesn't have a significance. Um, okay, uh, so if we plug in this information again, we're going to get uh, that's negative uh, 100 over 9x squared uh, plus 320x over 9 minus uh, 247 over 9. Okay, uh, and then computing L uh, prime of 2, 1 of x is going to give us uh, minus 200 over 9x uh, plus 320 over 9. Okay, for the second set, if you will. And then uh, finally, then the last uh, grouping, uh, we have L22 uh, two of x. And that's going to give us uh, x minus x0, x minus x1, and then x2 minus x0, and x2 minus x1. Okay, uh, and plugging in this, we're going to get 50 over 9x squared minus 145 over 9x plus uh, 104 over 9. Okay, and then computing the derivative here of L22 um, 
we're going to get what 100 over 9 at uh, minus 145 over 9. Okay, all right, perfect. All right, so now with these values, we can now can start to compute uh, the Hermite polynomial. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Uh, so h, um, h of 2, 0 of x, kind of draw a line here uh, to let us know that we're starting the new uh, the new part, if you will. Uh, so this is going to equal, uh, so this is going to be 1 minus 2 times x minus, uh, so this is going to be uh, x0 here, because we're talking about h0, so this is going to be 1.3, uh, coming back up here to the data, okay? So in case you're just reminding you where this is coming from, uh, and then equal to negative 5. Well, what is that negative five? You might be wondering. In the uh, in the formula, this is the value of um, h two zero prime evaluated at uh, that point one point three. Okay, uh, so that simplifies down to uh, negative five. You plug that in, and then let's see what else we get. Um, then we get uh, 50 over 9x squared minus 175 over, oh, no, over, here, over 9x, and then plus 152 over 9. Okay, and then that whole thing gets squared. Okay, so again, this part right here, oops, that, this part right here is just our L20. Okay, so we're just plugging that, that back in. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, and let's see, I think we can maybe simplify this part right now, uh, just for later. Um, so negative, uh, makes that a positive, so that's a positive 5 and a 2, so that's a 10, and that's going to be 13, so 13, um, be minus 13 plus 1, so it'll be uh, 10 x minus 12, is what that simplifies to, times that. Okay, all right, let's look at um, h of uh, 2, 1 of x. Okay. Right, so this is going to equal to 1 times, uh, let's see, negative 100 over 9x squared plus 320 over 9x uh, minus 247 over 9 quantity squared. All right, uh, so I'm going to fill out the rest of these, and I'll kind of speed through these in the in the video, um, just so you can kind of see uh, where I'm plugging everything in. I don't think it's very informative if you just watch me uh, write through these slowly. So I'm going to go ahead and write in a bunch of the, the rest of these results, and then we'll we'll come back together uh, at the end of that. So I'm at H21. Uh, now that we've gotten through all of those, so those are just plugging in the, the values back from our uh, the Hermite polynomial theorem. Okay, and so now uh, let's actually construct uh, the Hermite polynomial. So uh, with this, then we'll need to bring in uh, the data from uh, that was given to us here. Okay, so we're going to have, uh, so there now we have the components of it. We can actually write then that H5 of X is going to equal uh, so this is going to be zero point. This is the first, uh, the first value here. So we're going to plug that in. So that's going to be six uh, two zero eight. I'm thinking zero. Yep, zero eight six zero. Um, and that's going to be times h two zero. So instead of writing all of that, I'll save that. So this h two zero was what we got here. Okay, so that would be the that value, and then plus. Let's see, we got 0 0.455 4022H21 of X. Okay, that's the uh, second value here. And then, of course, the third value. Uh, so plus 0 0.28181. I have to be careful there because I want to write 288281818186H. Two two of x. Okay, uh, I've got the bar on the h there. Okay, and so that's that's the first part, and then we're going to subtract from this then 
uh, minus the h hat components. So this is going to be, um, and they're, they're subtracted because uh, each of the derivatives uh, has a negative sign. So uh, here we have uh, 0 0.5220232 uh, times h uh, 20 of x hat. And then we're going to minus from this point um, 5, 6, 9, 8, 9, uh, 5, 9, 8, 2, 1 of x hat. And then I'm subtracting from that uh, 0 0.5, 8, 1, 1, 5, 7, 1, h, 2, 2 of x hat. Okay. Uh, and so if we plug all of that information in, okay, uh, and evaluate, um, at h uh, 5 of uh, 1.5, which is what the problem was asking for. Uh, so these values we plug in directly, so it would be uh, this value times that. Um, you get that, uh, call this like alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. So this is alpha 1. Uh, the h2 0 of, um, of uh, 1.5 is 4 over 27. Plus alpha two, uh, the this alpha two times uh, plugging in one point five for this h two one, you get uh, sixty four over eighty one, and then plus alpha three, um, plugging that in to here for that value, you get uh, five over eighty one. Okay, uh, and then you're going to subtract. And I'll just write it off as a subtraction out in front. Uh, so it's going to be uh, I'll call this I guess beta one beta 2 and beta 3. Uh, since these all are minuses, I'm just going to leave it out there. So this is beta 1. Plugging in uh, h um, or 1.5 x is equal to 1.5 into h uh, 2 1 hat, I get 4 out of 405 uh, plus beta 2 times uh, that one was a negative 32 over 405. Uh, and that was in x equal 1.5 into beta uh, h 2 one hat and then plus beta three. The subscription kill you gotta be careful about what you're doing there. And this is negative two um, four oh five. Okay. All right. So if you plug in all of that and uh reduce it down, you get that this value then the estimate is five one one eight two seven seven. Okay, so that's the the approximation of uh, H of one point five. Okay, or the approximation of the fifth degree um or my polynomial, uh, given this data and trying to approximate it at 1.5, which is in between, of course, 1.3 and 1.6. Okay. All right. So this is the first method um, of tackling this. And so uh, we're gonna let's try it then. So this is just using the Hermite polynomial theorem directly and uh, creating the Lagrangian uh, polynomials, taking their derivatives, and then uh, constructing the Hermite polynomials and then evaluating it uh, evaluating each of the Hermite polynomials uh, for the total sum um, at that point. So uh, it is a lot of computation. It does feel like it's a heavy amount, but just realize like in in reality, what you're doing isn't too bad, right? You're you're interpolating the, the polynomial using Lagrangian and its derivatives, right? So we've done that all right, uh, enough already. And then we're just uh, adding the sums up in a different way, okay? So the other way to kind of approach this, um, especially for these smaller examples that I think for me, feels more intuitive. Uh, even though this does feel, um, it's a it's a nice algorithm. It's a nice straightforward approach. Is uh, to think of it as literally just a polynomial, right? So um, let's call it h five of x. Um, uh, boy, um, should have thought of some parameters here. Uh, this sort of further coefficients. Um, let's say uh, I want to. You Greek letters, but I'll just go A. Um, so A, X to the fifth plus B, X to the fourth plus C, uh, X to the third plus D, uh, X to the um, second plus, oh, here's a problem. Uh, I'll call it E, but this is not the exponential E. Uh, e, uh, X, and then plus, uh, I don't want to use, uh, we're approximating the function f, um, g, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do that. Okay, and so then uh, if we calculate uh, h 
prime of x here, uh, we're going to get uh, 5ax to the fourth plus 4bx cubed plus 3cx squared plus uh, 2bx uh, plus e. Okay, and the derivative of g is zero. Okay, uh, and so um, we can evaluate this at each of those points and create a system. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six unknowns. Um, and so we can use this system that we're going to construct here to solve each of those. Uh, and it'll be a linear system uh, because the values of x at the nodes are actually known. OK. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so um, I guess we can just create the matrix down here. Um, yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, I'm going to put a little line here just to kind of show you. So I'm going to plug in x, uh, the the nodes into each of these values, and then uh, I have three nodes, so it's going to create uh, three equations in h prime of x, and then I have uh, again three nodes in h prime, uh, and I know what those values are equal to, so those will be the that'll create then the augmented matrix. So um, so we have a, and then we're going to put in uh, one point three to the fifth, um, I guess I can write it out like this. Yeah, 1.3 uh, to the fourth plus um, C 1.3 cubed plus D 1.3 squared plus E 1.3 and then plus G, okay? Uh, and then we have A 1.6, yeah, 1.6 to the fifth plus b 1.6 to the fourth, plus c 1.6 cubed plus d 1.6 squared plus e 1.6 plus g. And then we have a 1 point, uh, is it nine? Yeah, to the fifth, plus b times 1.9 to the fourth, plus c 1.9 cubed plus d equals 1.9 squared plus e 1.9. That looks like it's missing a dot. Uh, and then plus g. Okay, so those are the h uh, h fives, and now we're going to do the derivatives. So uh, here we're going to have uh, we're going to have five five a times uh, one point three to the fourth, and I'll go here uh, uh, five a and five a to the fourth to the fourth plus b. But nope, that should be four uh, b. 4b plus 4b cubed, 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 plus, plus, plus uh, 3c, 3c, 3c. Um, and this should be uh, what? squared, squared, and squared, and then plus 2d, plus 2d, plus 2d, and then that'll be the same, and then plus uh, what e? plus e plus e, okay, uh, and there'll be no more plus g because that, that's gone, uh, and then each of these will be um, the corresponding 1.3, 1 1.6, 1 1.9, 1 1.3, 1 1.6, 1.9, 1.3, 1.6, 1.9, okay, uh, and so the only thing that we got to do now is set these equal to uh, the data points here, so these are the six data points, so the first equation will be set equal to this value, Second equation will be this value. Third equation will be this value. Okay, and then in the way I have it constructed here, uh, the fourth equation will be this one, fifth equation, and sixth equation. So those will be so the first row. Uh, this is the H uh, five values with A, B, C, D, E, F, and G um, evaluated at the first value of 1.3. This is at uh, H five at 1.6, and then eight uh, H five at 1.9, and then these are the derivative values evaluated at the same. 3, 1.3, 1.6, 1.9. This is the this is the the coefficient matrix. Um, so this would be the x to the fifth term, the coefficient of x uh, to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, uh, x, and then the constant term. And so, um, and this should make sense, right? That the uh, zero of the constant term is gone, and the three derivative terms and the linear term is just the coefficient uh, of one in each of those. Okay, and then these are the three derivatives at uh, 1.3, 1.6, and 1.9. Sorry, not the derivatives, the 
functional values at those points. And then these are the derivative values, 1.3, 1.6, 1.9. Okay, uh, so to uh, get the coefficients, then I invert the matrix A uh, and multiply it by our solution vector B, which is this. Okay, and that gives me this matrix. Okay, this column matrix here, where this is the coefficient of the x to the fifth term, x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the uh, third, second, x, and then the constant term. Okay, and so I construct my Hermite polynomial by creating the A terms. This is the A. So this is the in maxima, if you do uh, the column vector B1, uh, and put that in brackets, it's saying that this is the first term, so this is the second term, third term, so that's the coefficient corresponding to that. So that creates my, um, that creates my, um, my matrix. And then to evaluate H at uh, 1.5, I plug that in. Um, and when I do that, uh, I get out very similarly to all the way out to the seven, the second seven here, uh, that the value of the Hermite polynomial uh, that corresponds to this data is 0.5118277, and then um, extra digits because our precision ends at that point. Okay, uh, so you can see that this method or this process using the uh, using a system of equations gives you the same results as constructing the the polynomial the other way. So I just uh, thought that the two um, solution processes would mirror each other really well and uh, kind of help you make more sense of what looks like a really um, complicated and scary kind of approach to uh, constructing a polynomial with a Hermite polynomial. So it actually um, is actually not too bad uh, when you look at smaller systems like this um, and that the superiority of the theorem, of course, belongs when you start to increase the number of terms that you have. Uh, that gives a nice uh, algorithmic way of figuring out those values. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that will cover it for this example. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.